Hello and welcome to D6 Tabletop. In this video, it's time for a 40k tournament. So recently I took part in a Warhammer 40,000 10th edition tournament down at Atlas Tabletop Gaming in the Keys in Gloucestershire. Um, I had a great day out, it was good fun. I took Necrons, which I know is a bit contentious at the moment due to the fact that some people think they're a little overpowered. Um, but I had a great day, uh, I did really well, um, as you're about to see in some of the videos, clips I took on the day. So let's go over the list that I took with me to the tournament. Kicking things off, I took a Lich Guard 10-man squad, twin them up with an Overlord and a Technomancer. The Overlord had the enhancement Sepaternal Weave, giving them a 4-up Fill No Pain, and I gave the Technomancer the Hypermaterial Ablator, making them minus 1 to hit and the benefits of stealth if they're being shot from outside of 12. Next up, two 20-man Warrior Blobs, both with Lords and Technomancers. The main benefit of that is obviously with the Lords and the Overlords, Reanimation can happen at the start of both players' command phases using the orbs and the Technomancers grant the 5-up Feel No Pain to the entire unit. Like I said, the whole point of this army is to work at just staying alive and holding objectives. And with that amount of OC control, and with that hopefully amount of staying power and resurrections, it should be nice and easy to complete each turn. To put a bit of teeth in the list, I've got two Canoptic Doomstalkers. They're the heavy guns. They're about the only heavy guns in the list. Um, and they're there for some anti-tank. Not the uh, most reliable of weapons, but best for the points, I think, at the moment. A reanimator's in there as well. Obviously, they, are, they give a 12-inch aura for reanimations, making it that much more stronger. Some Tomb Blades in there for some bikes for some speed. They work as an early game objective capturing unit, and also a bit of harassing on the board. But they're not the strongest in the army, and they don't last very long, usually. So they're more to score points early doors before they get taken off. In Deep Strike, some Ophidian Destroyers. The points of these were... They don't last very long, again, but they are good at coming in on the board later on with Deep Strike and scoring some points. And also, if they're not within engagement range of an enemy unit, they can go back into Deep Strike and come back down later on in the game, which is quite a nice little thing to have. Also in the list is the Hexmark Destroyer, or the Glocktopus, depending on who you what you call it. Um, he was mainly there as a buffing character to try and return some extra shots, to do add a bit of precision to the list and try and take any characters I came across. And if all else failed, I would stick him in Deep Strike and use him as a late game objective scoring. And then lastly, a Satan Shard of the Void Dragon, my true only anti-vehicle, anti-tank. Um, bit disappointed in him really, I don't think he really brought enough to the table for his point cost. But I'm going to play a few more games with him and see how that works out and see what I think about him. But it was quite a cool, nice little list. And like I said, the main strategy with this list is to hold the points with the Warrior Blobs and the Lich Guard and let the bikes, the Satan and the destroyers go around the board, either killing things or scoring extra objectives on secondaries. So game one then. Game one was Rob and his Tanesh Demons. Interesting army for this. He's got a mixture of um, armor and foot, a lot of shooter units. So I had to be a bit careful here. Started off putting Lich Guard Blob in the middle, sat there most of the game, they did come back to try and slice up a few things later on. My Veil of Darkness allowed me to put my Warrior Blob straight into the objective in the corner and contest that for most of the game. Due to the high number of bodies and their OC value, I pretty much held that most of the game as well. Um, he pressured me on my right, I lost quite a lot of units when his Crawlers came forward. Luckily, come turn two, I managed to drop down the Void Dragon and remove most of those due to the fact that I just kept coming back and being able to have higher OC on a lot of those objectives scored me the points that I needed to win the game. Final score, 94 to the Necrons, 30 to the Slash Demons. So that was game one. Uh, scored quite well on that. Uh, I felt I'd managed to, I managed to have good board control and my Necrons kept coming back, which was the point of the list. Um, the big guns didn't really do a great deal and I did shoot them occasionally at the wrong thing. Wasn't really thinking, I ended up nearly losing the reanimator due to being charged by one of those robot things. I forgot what they're called. Um, but the Void Dragon coming in at the end and being able to destroy them helped immensely. So into game two, I drew Zack with his Imperial Guard list with two Bane Blades. 
I have no idea, I had no idea, I now know, I had no idea at the time which one was a bigger threat and I ended up doubling down on the wrong one. Uh, turns out the one with the big plasma gun is not the biggest threat, it's the one with the normal cannon that can do lots of mortal wounds. Um, so, have a look, here we go. Okay, so game two, Zack and his Imperial Guard. Deployment wise, we had the quarter deployment as you can see here. Uh, hemmed us both in quite a bit, as you can see the size of those giant bane blades. Now, looking at my deployment, I'm deciding that I've got cleanse, which means I need to do object uh, actions on objectives in no man's land, and I've got engage on all fronts. So, about ball control and staying in the areas. So, my first thoughts are Lich Guard goes straight into the middle, they sit there and they just take as much fire as it gets thrown at them to keep scoring the points and keep raising. Now, one unit is going to move up to that north objective where that power converter is. What I end up doing is using the Veil of Darkness on a warrior blob and sticking them inside that building and just hiding in there for the game and scoring the points. And then using my anti-tank whilst I've still got it to shoot out one of these Bane Blades. Now, I do get to go first here. And this is where I make my first mistake because I put all of my firepower into the plasma tank Bane Blade, not knowing that that is actually not the most dangerous one. So by the time I figure that out, Zack manages to shoot out all of my anti-tank and all my big guns and starts whittling away at my units. He does make a break and make a charge for the middle to try and take on the Lich Guard. It does fail pretty badly and all the infantry he sends in get chopped up. He then sends his sentinels round to try and take out my reanimator because currently it's given me too many good buffs, which forces me to then use the Lich Guard to charge out from the Cernter into the sentinels and i have to remove those and just stay in combat with them for a little bit which i do towards the end of the game he has shot out pretty much everything that will not reanimate immediately all i'm left with is some warriors some lich guard and one hexmark destroyer mvp holding the home objective even when he charges it with his unit that he brings back onto the board it still stays strong and still wants to score me the objective while shooting off the unit that arrives from his reinforcements I have a set of bikes that I use early game to score some points in the bottom right. They subsequently die very fast like they always do. I pretty much chalk that unit up just being a simple score and die unit. Uh, and then in reserve I have the Void Dragon which came in, looked at a tank and died and did absolutely nothing having failed its charge. And then also my destroyers came in and subsequently also died because they failed their charge and got shot by all the Imperial Guard guns. So it all bottled down to just having two warrior blobs with their Technomancers and Lords and the Lich Guard with Overlord and Technomancer holding the objectives, scoring the points and doing the actions. The warrior blob in the top left didn't actually shoot any guns that entire game. They just that sat up there and scored me engage and cleanse and primary the entire game. Ending with the game, final score, 85 to the Necrons, 77 to the Astro Militarum, or, or Imperial Guard. So thankfully, I managed to withstand the bombardment of Imperial Guard that was game two with Zack. Um, thankfully, reanimation protocols kept me in that game, uh, as I was hoping it would, and even though he put nearly the entirety of his army into my Lich Guard Bob, Lich Guard, Lich Guard Blob, try saying that three times, it wasn't until turn five that he managed to actually get them off the board. So, scored on points, as I was hoping to, managed to keep my Ben alive, men, robots, alive, and score the points without actually doubling down and killing much of his. So next up is game three. I'm now on the top table. Going into this, this, uh, this game, I am top of the board. I've scored the highest points, and I've drawn Jack. Local champion, he does very well at every tournament he goes to. And he has brought a list of stuff that I have no idea what it is. It's orcs, and it's th three, I think it was three giant orc morconauts, gorkonauts, I don't know. It's like a giant knight thing for orcs, which, as you can imagine, is not what I needed because I haven't got a lot of teeth in the list. I haven't got a lot of anti-armor. Um, and he drew first, so. Let's see how it went. So, game three. Jack and his orcs. Just look at these things. I don't even know what they're called. I'm sure someone can tell me. 
Anyway, long story short, this is the quite possibly the worst list I could possibly play against. I've got no anti-armor, save two guns, and I didn't get priority. First thing he did was kill my anti-tank guns, then he killed my reanimator, and then he just absolutely swamped the insane amount of shots these things put out onto all of my units. And unfortunately, I couldn't reanimate as fast as he was killing me. I couldn't score points because the size of the things on the objectives meant I couldn't actually get on them. And I couldn't score any of my secondaries because my fixed ones that I took for the day just required me to be on objectives or in areas. And if I was out in the open, I got shot to pieces. So long story short, short game, lost to me. And we managed to go and get a cup of tea afterwards whilst we watched everyone else play. Final score, 92 to the Orcs, 56 to the Necrons. So that was my tournament experience in 40k 10th edition with my Necrons. In the end I came fourth, unfortunately that last loss to Jack put me down the table from first to fourth. Uh, great day out overall, really enjoyed my list. Um, I don't know if I'd tweak it much to do it again, I think it was just luck of the draw with the last one. I, don't, I still don't feel there's enough punch in Necrons at the moment to bring something else to the list to take out anti-armor without sacrificing the core that I like of warrior blobs and reanimations and holding on. So we'll see. I've got some more testing to do. And I really hope they bring an update out for Tal soon that let you use close quarter version. I really want Montcar and we'll see what it brings. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, please hit like, comment and subscribe to the channel and we will see you all again very soon in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care.